I threw my heart in the flames, it's all part of the game I'm kinda part tame, arcane, hella dark in this lane Jolly Roger on my Harley, sipping grape or dead barley While I ship this Chris Farley, smoking 420 party With my American Barbie, I'm the summer cum laude How could I ever be tardy, we shoot at the sheriff Nowadays with Bob Molly. pinky and my pointer finger up for the gnarly Yes, the beast eats hearty, that's the third regarding I walk on crossroads on top of all bones What I call home, but we own cyclone Got the eyes of a drone, I'm despising the clones That's why I'm riding Real nigga spit ain't nothing but facts. Real nigga spit ain't nothing but facts. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Yeah. Real nigga spit ain't nothing but facts. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Yeah. Where a nigga Machiavelli at? Yeah, real nigga. Where the nigga Nat Turner at? Real nigga. Where the nigga Jamie Fox at? Yeah, real nigga. Where the nigga John Coltrane? Real nigga. Where the nigga Jay Z at? Yeah, real nigga. Where the nigga Benjamin Banneker? Real nigga. Where the nigga Samuel Jackson? Real nigga. Where the nigga Louis Armstrong? Real nigga. Where the nigga Master P at? Yeah, real nigga. Where the nigga Frederick Douglass at? Yeah, real nigga. Where the nigga Danny Glover at? Yeah, real nigga. Where that nigga Miles Davis had a real nigga Where that nigga Puck Daddy had a real nigga Where that nigga Harry Tubman a real nigga Where that nigga Whoopi Goldberg a real nigga Where that nigga Lena Horne had a real nigga Real, real nigga spit ain't nothing but facts Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back Real, real nigga spit ain't nothing but facts Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back Where that nigga Beyonce had a real nigga Where the real Rick Ross had a real nigga where the nigga Washington cover a real nigga? Where the nigga Fred Hampton at a real nigga? Where the nigga Maya Angelou a real nigga? Where the nigga Jeff Ford at a real nigga? Where the nigga Malachi York a real nigga? Where the nigga Angela Davis a real nigga? Where the nigga Shaka Khan at a real nigga? Where the nigga Rayful Edmund a real nigga? Where the nigga Madam Walker a real nigga? Where the nigga Asada Shakur a real nigga? Where the nigga Oprah Winfrey at a real nigga? Where the nigga Madam Sinclair a real nigga? Where the nigga Colin Muhammad a real nigga? Where the nigga Huey P. Newton a real nigga? Real, real nigga spit ain't nothing but facts. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Real, real niggas spit ain't nothing but facts. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Where that nigga Mayweather at a real nigga. Where that nigga Martin Luther King a real nigga. Where that nigga Eddie I mean a real nigga. Where that nigga Emmett Hill at a real nigga. Where that nigga Tiger Woods at a real nigga. Where that nigga Malcolm X at a real nigga. Where that nigga Chaka Zulu at a real nigga. Where that nigga Mike Brown now a real nigga. Where that nigga Bo Jackson at a real nigga? Where that nigga Marcus Garvey at a real nigga? Where that nigga Mansa Moose a real nigga? Where that nigga Trayvon Martin real nigga? Where that nigga Magic Johnson at a real nigga? Where that nigga Obama at a real nigga? Where's that Amistad shit full of real niggas? Pour out a bottle of Louis for real niggas. Real niggas spit ain't nothing but facts. Other motherfuckers back. don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars Louis in their back. Farrakhan. Other motherfuckers don't got scars don't in their back. Real, real niggas spit ain't nothing but facts. Nat Other motherfuckers Cole. don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers, back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Real, real niggas spit ain't nothing but facts. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Yeah, what y'all need to understand. Denzel Rice racism talk. It is that everybody me. wants to get into hip hop, and y'all niggas can't claim this 400 no, by 100 years of slavery, my like dog. You understand Moore. this jazz, this rap, this rock Bob and roll, Johnson. this pimping and hoeing, this gangster shit Reed. that we do, we do because Michael that's how we got out of slavery, my nigga. Trick that that's how we survived, my nigga. So while you think this shit Carl is Thomas, a night Jay in the club, this is our lifestyle. Sure this is all the fuck we got. Understand that. Twist you ain't got the scars on your back, homie. It's not in your blood. It's in ours. And it will forever be. Know that. Real, real nigga spit ain't nothing but facts. Other motherfuckers don't got scars in their back. Niggas can't see how the business work. They got to come to the round table. That's right. With the God and Seti. Right. Black pop. Right? That's what I'm saying. Hey, man, we got to 
I got a presentation coming up. We ain't got the date set because we round tabling That's over right. here. We, we going with yeah. Guys yeah. Okay, go right. ahead. Uh, you know, this kicked out of heaven, you know, the untold history of the uh, white races from 700 to 1700. Yeah. AD. We're going to go, boy, going in on your master. <laughs> going in on your, on your granddad. Yeah. On master other land. Yeah. You know, going in on master once again. You know? Nah, nah, when I saw that beam, you remember that beam? When they shot, when they blew up Britain, and I saw that beam, when oh, they yeah. said, Lord, they done. They done blew up out the other land. <laughs> That's what this shit is right here. This is about the other land. Okay, <laughs> this is Europe right here. You dig what I'm saying? We ain't got the date set, man. You know, this is a little short video. We over here, early bird, doing it, That's you know. Right. Get ready. Yeah. Getting ready to get big. Yeah. But most definitely, we gonna uh, get together and uh, this is right up my alley. Yeah. And I really wanna uh, get down to some of the major uh, topics of the book. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So get back with me. Yeah, yeah. He gonna do the questionnaire and see what's happening here is I'm gifting. This is when you do when you're doing business, That's you right. got a gift. That's right. And I gift niggas who didn't put in the work and he didn't put in the work with many documentaries, flying all across the globe, doing his lecturing. So this is gifting for men who put in work. This is for those who know me, you know what I'm saying? I gift niggas. Right up my you know what I'm saying? And there's a lot more coming, man, especially for those who gonna help me out with the music and all of that. And the guy's 720 all on Amazon. Keenan Booker all on Amazon. You can you can uh, you know put both names in the search engine and different products will pull up. That's you right. dig what I'm saying? So right. yeah, we we making this real early. This ain't number two three minutes, man. Let y'all niggas know how we do in Vegas, man. Early bird, get the worm. That's right. Yeah. You know Bangonthebeast.com. Yeah, bangonthebeast.com. He got the, tell him about the come ups you got this. This is already in stone, man. Oh man, uh, um, July the 9th, I'm gonna be in Dallas. You know, uh, Pan African Connection. Uh, brother Ro uh, Robert uh, West down there. Uh, I, I might even fuck his name. <laughs> <laughs> so we just you know July 9th you gonna be where yeah, yeah, yeah. in Dallas okay y'all look out and y'all y'all put some y'all go check it out with and see what's what's going down man what you gonna be talking about oh man uh the revolutionary history of ancient Kim oh okay that's right and that's all yeah all yeah, the warriors and the conflicts. That's right. Right, right. So you know, that's how we. That's what we're gonna be talking about, man. Y'all check out theguy720.com. Y'all check out Kicked Out of Heaven, Black Man's Bible. We doing it, all right? Black power. Yeah. This is the, 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 the combination of man and wolf. Okay, as you see here, we've been talking about this whole process here. 
The combination of man and wolf, the ravaging of the wolf is the man's responsibility. As that is the full level of his anger. His anger to appease and to search for relaxation. Whatever, whatever you have to ravage to put you back at ease. Okay? And it may be a little blood and skin in your fingernails, if need be. Ravaging will always be done by a male. The werewolf will always be done by a male. Because a male can rape. A female can't rape. Okay? A female cannot ravage. Okay? And that is why you do not see the werewolf being turned into by a woman. There are very small cases throughout history even in these time periods of, woman, of women becoming wolves, where women usually show their ferociousness in the hair. I mean in the cat, not the hair. The hair is the symbol of the ferocious sexuality of the female. The cat is the symbol of the ferocious seduction and mystery. Yeah, the hair is not seduction. The hair is extremely the fucking, you see. The cat is the seduction and the seducer with the tail in the air, okay? Now, when we go back to the man, we look here and we see the battle of the man and the wolf. And as you see here, his left hand is cut off. This is the stump of the wolf. You see that? He has no hand. This is supposed to be Peter's stump right here, okay? Now, but it's supposed to be his left hand cut off. This is his right hand cut off. Okay. Now, um, right here is Peter Stump tied to the wheel. Okay. About to have the bones pounded and about to be beheaded, as you see here in the process. And then after the beheading, the beheading, the head is put in combination with the wolf in death, in ritual format to send directly to the to hell with the hound, okay? Now, the wolf of hell takes the soul. And then here we have the body being dragged to expire in the flames. Next, we have the story, Peter Stump. Peter Stump's name is also spelled as Peter Stump, Peter Stump, Peter Stump, Peter Stump, Peter Stump. And other aliases include such names as a ball, Griswold, a Bill Griswold, Griswold and Ubel Griswold. The name Stomp, Stomp, may have been given as a reference to the fact that his left hand had been cut off, leaving only a stump in German Stomp. It was alleged that as the werewolf had its left forepaw cut off, then the same injury proved the guilt of the man. Stomp was born at the village of Eprath, near the, count, near the country town of Bedburg, in the electorate of Cologne. His date of birth is not known, as the local church registers were destroyed during the Thirty Years' War, 1618-1648. He was a wealthy farmer of his rural community. During the 1580s, he seems to have been a widower with two children, a girl called Bill Seville, who seems to have been older than 15 years old, and a son of an unknown age. During the years before his trial, he had an intimate relationship with a distant relative, which would be incest, named Katharina Trump, also spelled Trumpin or Trumpin. In other languages, the R's are usually rolled like D's, but I am not going to do that in my enunciation of words while speaking to you today. But, as we see here, it looks as if Stump the famous werewolf of Germany has had relations with a young lady named Trump. Our current president, his last name is Trump. And he has had very oddball activity. Adolf Hitler. The word Adolf means noble wolf. So as we have seen the Adolf during that time, we have the Trump now. And we could have some things coming, who knows? But the permission of full ravaging, as he is doing. Wouldn't you say Trump is ravaging right now? Absolutely. Okay. 
is in allowance of his position and he probably won't be touched to do it because it is well documented that the Trump has a possibility to float through the veins. And we also have to watch out for the widow's peak. His son has the widow's peak. huh? That was the Wolverine in the Adams family, wasn't it? The little boy was the werewolf, wasn't he? And didn't he have that strong-ass widow's peak? Huh? Okay, there we go. Now, during 1589, Stump had one of the most lurid and famous werewolf trials of history. After being stretched on a rack, and before further torture commenced, he confessed to having practiced black magic since he was 12 years old. He claimed that the devil had given him a magical belt or girdle, which enabled him to metamorph into the likeness, the likeness, which is lycanthropy, the likeness of a greedy, devouring wolf, strong and mighty, with eyes great and large, which in the night sparkled like fire, and mouth great and wide with most sharp and cruel teeth, a huge body and mighty paws. Removing the belt, he said, made him transform back to his human form. This process of turning into a werewolf has been, is the process that has been mentioned for over 2,000 years. Your current intelligence of a wolf turning into uh, a man turning into a wolf by the moon is connected through the loop garou, which is the loop ga the loop garou is the word of the werewolf in France. The word L U Lou goes into the Luna, which also goes into lunatic, which allows the werewolf. But once again, another thing that's not mentioned about this ritual right here is that there was a little cannibalism involved. And also it had to be done at a mountain top. This is also relative to the howling wolves naturally do when there are full moons. So, to transfer the werewolf entity from the old world into the new world, we needed to change the barbarianism which did not view European culture to be so savage. Okay? We all identify with the predatorial mentality that comes during the midnight hours. All civilizations and all cultures on the planet understand that. You can understand that by looking at nature. At nature, only the craziest, ugliest, with the animals with the wildest attack formats come out at night. When you go into the deepest parts of the ocean, it's the same thing. Okay? So. For 25 years, Stump had allegedly been an insatiable bloodsucker who gorged on the flesh of goats, lambs, and sheep, as well as men, women, and children, being threatened with torture. He confessed to killing and eating 14 children, two pregnant women, whose fetuses had ripped from their wounds and ate their hearts, panting hot and raw, which he later described as dainty morsels. Okay? And they called chocolate chips what? Morsels. Huh? One of the 14 children was his own son, whose brain he was reported to have devoured. Well, there's a lot of crazy wordplay that they use, like the word terrific, which is also the same word as terrified. Huh? Yeah. So, which is also the same word as terror, which is also the same word as territory. It goes on, it goes for, you see? So, how is terrific and terrified at the same source? When terrific is supposed to be something great that you did, but terrified is supposed to be you're scared, and it's the same fucking word. Okay, so um, not only was Stump accused of being a serial murderer and cannibal, but also of having an incestuous relationship with his daughter, who was sentenced to die with him, and that he had coupled with a distant relative, which was also considered to be incestuous according to the law. In addition to this, he confessed to having had intercourse with a succubus sent to him by the devil. The execution of Stump on November, I mean on October 31st, 1589, and of his daughter and mistress is one of the most brutal on record. He was put to a will where flesh was torn from his body in 10 places with red hot pinchers followed by his arms and legs. Then his limbs were broken with the blunt side of an ax head to prevent him from returning from the grave. So that's the undead. So the undead was so prevalent at the time 
And necromancers were so prevalent at the time that they had to prepare bodies to not re, uh, reanimate out of the grave by breaking down all of their bones. Before he was beheaded and his body burned on a pyre, his daughter and, him and mistress had already been flayed and strangled and were uh, burned along with Stump's body. As a warning against similar behavior, local authorities erected a pole with the church of wheel and the figure of a wolf on it, and at the very top they placed Peter Stump's severed head. Okay. So Flayed is being skinned alive. They skinned the women alive. Okay? You don't play the shit. Now the woman hatred. Christianity affirmed the spiritual equality of men and women, but St. Paul and many of the most influential church fathers blurred that doctrine. Women became the temptresses of men, men who moved the wills of state, of religion, and of learning. Men whose souls were particularly, if not theoretically, more important. In most Christian theology and tradition, this misogyny was kept within bounds, but sometimes it burst out cruel, uh, crudely. Heinrich and Sistatoris, uh, the author of the Malleus Mal of Carum, spoke from this position when he explained the predominance of women in witchcraft. Before I go in, we have to understand that the woman is very seductive. Her little sweet smells come out of her body, okay? And they run around and they and they, they have the baby fat, okay? They have the, the nipples, they have the parts, they squirt juices on you, okay? And that's what they do, okay? And it is, it is the witchcraft, it is the disturbance. Oh yeah, it is a destruction towards a man's work. And the man must work or we all go to shit. We all go back to the cave. So if I sit here staring at the ass crack all day, if I sit here staring at the woman all goddamn day, nothing gets done. And I'm telling you, the allowance of free porn will destroy the world, okay? <laughs> I'm telling you right now, society is crumbling, okay? The quality of humans are crumbling, okay? Because people want the butt and we want immediate butt and all this dating shit is gonna have to cut to get to the butt, okay? And just cause you got a gut don't mean I ain't fixed to get to the butt, okay? So don't, <laughs> hey, niggas love that pussy, man. So you gonna have to start, I don't know, if women fuck more, I get you. I bet you men will calm down on it, be more focused on what they got to do instead of focusing on what's so, what women make difficult to get. You dig what I'm saying? So this is so, that's part of the mentality why they go hard like this. Because if they didn't, we wouldn't have cars. We'd all be sitting on a, a fucking rack somewhere right now. Anyways, what else is woman but a foe to friendship? This is Christian theology. This is how a high-ranking priest who wrote the Mouth of Karam thinks about the women. What else is woman but a foe to friendship and inescapable punishment? A necessary evil, a natural temptation, a desirable calamity, a domestic danger, a delectable detriment, an evil of nature, painted in fair colors. The word woman is used to mean the lust of the flesh. As it is said, I have found a woman more bitter than death, and a good woman more subject to carnal lust. Women are more credulous. And since the chief aim of the devil is to corrupt faith, therefore he rather attacks them. Women are naturally more impressionable. They have slippery tongues and are un unable to conceal from their fellow women those things which by evil arts they know. <laughs> women are intellectually like children. She is more carnal than a man, as is clear from her many carnal abominations. She is an imperfect animal. She always deceives. Therefore, a wicked woman is by her nature quicker to waver in her faith, and consequently quicker to abjure the faith, which is the root of witchcraft, just as through the first defect of their intelligence they are more prone to abjure the faith. So through their second defect of inordinate affections and passions, they search for, brood over, and inflict various vengeances, either by witchcraft or by some other means. Women also have weak memories, and it is a natural vice in them not to be disciplined but to follow their own impulses without any sense of what is due. She is a liar by nature. Let us also consider her gait, posture, and habit, and which is 
vanity of vanities. <laughs> Illmatic. <laughs> yeah, so that's what it is. Okay? Um, all religions have a problem with women. All of them do. As soon as the woman come through in a religion, okay. Look at the ground, put this cloak on, bitch. That's right. You gonna put on. <laughs> you don't see shit. We got the pussy in here, okay. Put her over here, yeah, you gonna bake in the basement. Get your ass. <laughs> Get your ass up there in the choir. <laughs> That's right. You gonna be involved. We gonna lock the pussy down. Soon as the pussy get up in religion, uh, any religion, name it. They lock it down. Put the hat on, bitch. That's right. Do the motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, put it. Bake a cake. Yeah, damn it. Okay. Have the shit together. Now, these are the witches in their arts. Your witchcraft will always be caught. And this is the the man in the in the looking through the window catching the devilish work. And she's flying out of the chimney. And they got caught and they got burned on with faggots at the feet. Okay? We will stir the fire on your monkey ass. Okay? The devil collects the soul of the witch. These two devils are gonna go hang this witch. This is probably some picture drawn out of a woman whose deprivation was too high and, and uh, wanted to die. And there's many cases of that as well, of women who were like, well, he said I'm a witch, so I'm a witch. Kill me, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> the existence and the deprivation was so high. The rape and the amount of time she done went through the shit. The rape and the neglect was so high, huh? Because once you get raped, the neglect advances. Your thought pattern on neglect probably expounds way greater after you've been raped. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. So then right here we have the witches being hung. This is a picture out of England. Uh, this is the witch hunter collecting the money. This is a lot of money transferring right now. These are the nuns uh, praying for them, okay? And then this is the, the uh, I don't know who this dude is. But they're all definitions. I got the... The A, the B, C, and the D. I got it all written down in the book. I think this picture is in the book. Okay, so, um, cause the book has 197 pictures in it. I loaded it up so y'all can get a full uh, draft on what's going on here. So, what is the reason for the sexism, chauvinism, or more accurately, misogyny? Middlefort observed that the 16th century tended to be unusually misogynistic. Possibly because the demographic changes produced a larger number of women and covens declined. If, as Middlefort is estimates, perhaps 20% of uh, women were never married, and between 10 and 20% were widows, then something like 40% of women may have lived without legal and social protection of husbands. Many unmarried women and widows uh, found a home with brothers, sons, or others, but their proportion of single and lonely women seems to have increased. Such persons, isolated, unhappy, impoverished, and uh, grumbling, were easy targets for accusations of witchcraft. Such problems, possibly greatest in the 16th century, existed throughout the entire span of the witch race. At Bamberg in Bavaria, the executions from the year 1610 to 1640 were at the rate of about 100 annually. Uh, 100 a year. So that means every three days. Okay? One woman suspected of witchcraft was seized because having immoderately praised the beauty of a child. It had shortly afterwards fallen ill and died. She confessed upon the right that the devil had given her the power to work evil upon those she hated by speaking words in their praise. If she said with unwanted fervor, what a strong man, what a lovely woman, what a sweet child, the devil understood her and afflicted them with diseases immediately. It is un quite unnecessary to state the end of this poor creature. Many women were executed for causing strange substances to lodge in their bodies of those who offended them. Bits of wood, uh, nails, hair, eggshells, bits of glass, shreds of linen and woolen cloth, pebbles, and even hot cinders and knives were the articles generally chosen. Fucking compromise, bitch, because I know I'm shit. <laughs> From the hair to the nails to the game I spit, you got nothing coming. So if you disrespect me, whole bitch, you better start running. I control my own destiny, baby. <laughs> so get in where you fit in, bitch, and if you smell something stinking, that's me because I'm the shit. <laughs> I had to put those bars down from the great sugar free. Cause you have to understand, man, that what you call what you call pimps of the day 
actually have a lot of witch hunter to them. You know, they're witch hunters in reality. And they force witches to love. Period. Witches don't love. Witches have been neglected, raped, and put into their position. You know? But they still understand that in society, they need a man. Just like these ones up here was understanding, right? That you need a man for your full definition, kid. Okay? And you can't get no... You can't... Uh... Yeah, so, you know, you can't even do it. Okay? You can't get no man then you look like a fool out here. You dig? So, don't... Don't think that you good, you gravy, or you grand, because you got your little job and you go on your vacations and all this other shit. Nine times out of ten, you still a witch. You dig what I'm saying? And that's what's, that's what's happening here. A lot of witches are being developed through media and through society without them being known that they're being developed. Okay? And uh, that is a very nasty situation that you may be going to sleep with a witch and you don't even know. Okay? So what's very important here is just what a strong man, what a lovely woman, what a sweet child. I don't deal with no compliments like that. I mean, I like compliments, oh, that's good. But I don't find that as any form of prestige. You see? I don't find that as any form of fame. You know? But as you can see, a lot of people could have died as a child could have died from receiving a simple little compliment. We don't know what these people know because this is what's in their history and they're still showing us this shit on TV. Okay? They still got all your bewitched and all your dumbass TV shows. This shit is still in front of us. So we don't actually know what the fuck these motherfuckers know or what the fuck these motherfuckers are doing or why the fuck everybody else across the planet is too much of a fucking coward to understand this shit or why it's been so many generations people were fucking, you know, they were too, you know, they didn't get to it. You know, this shit should have been figured out a long time ago. But in actuality, I have to admit that a lot of this information is deep within American lore and uh, it really started getting cut off at around 1940, 1950 after the multitude of different wars that went down, you know, there was a cleanup of a lot of ancient information of America which allowed bitches to run rampant. And that's basically what's going on today. So with the worship of the whoredom of strippers and all that other shit, all of these are different forms of witches that niggas know nothing about, and you are underneath extreme attack, and then you wonder why you're emasculated, you have no dick, you have no money, you're on child support, okay? Women living without the patriarchal family support of father and, aunt and husband had little influence and little legal and social redress for wrongs. They had to do what they could. Since they were barred from normally effective means, they had recourse to means typically employed and powerless people. Arson, for example, was frequently attributed to old women since it is a crime that can be free suspicion. Any angry glare, I mean, an angry glare would be interpreted as the evil eye and irate epithet, as a curse muttering, as invocation, and loitering as working a spell. Old men also ran this kind of risk, but widows uh, uh, almost always outnumbered widowers. Women tend to live longer and did that, providing they survived childbirth. During the plagues, women survived much more readily, in some places being a recovery rate at least 600% higher than that of males. Under the stress and fear that accompanied the plagues, it was common to suspect the women of using magic to ensure their survival or even of encompassing the deaths of the men. Uh, this very weakness of the social position of women, particularly widows or unmarried women, made it safer to accuse them than to accuse. Men uh, whose political, financial, legal, and even physical strength rendered the accuser more liable to reprisals. A physically weak, socially isolated, financially destitute, and legally powerless old woman could offer only the deterrent of her, I mean the deterrent of her spells. Meaning they were useless to society. So get rid of them and collect the booty. We collect the booty, the spoils of war, all of her finances, and we divide them amongst the witch hunter, we divide them amongst the executioner, and we divide them amongst the state, as the claiming of the witch's body is now rendered as state property. Okay? And that's the way this game works. Okay? A woman who is not a lover, a woman who is past the age of 30 and only has pets in her home, a woman who does not have a man, 
a woman who only has one child and is of an ugly view, an ugly appearance. All of these women are usually nags and hags with nothing. And nobody will see after them once they hit 60 and 70 years old. And then they will look back at themselves and they will understand that their life was not fulfilled. They had no children, so their life had no fulfillment. You see what I'm saying? Or they had children and other children don't even communicate with them. Or they have disgruntled relationships with their children or even their grandchildren for that fact. And they get pushed out of existence by foul means. And that is how the witch may go. Because she doesn't realize that she has to be a pleasant woman until she's 60 and 70. And it's too late then. It's too fucking late. So guess what? You better be a loving wet cunt right now and you better keep it smelling like the Garden of Eden. Okay? So, witchcraft. Witchcraft is a composite phenomena drawing from folklore, sorcery, demonology, hearsay, and Christian theology. The chief individual components defined as witchcraft in the classical period were, one, those generally derived from sorcery, approximately 31%. Shape shifting, writing or flying, cannibalism, child murder, or the use of saws. The saws is ointment. Familiars, invocation of demons, and the choice of night as the time for witch activities. Uh, number two, the components generally derived from other folklore traditions, 23%. The goddess Diana, wild dances, the good society. The wild man and the wild chase, incubi and passing through closed doors or walls. Three, components deriving mainly from hearsay. 27%, the definition of witchcraft as a sect, secret meetings, desecration of cross or sacraments, formal repudiation of church, uh, synagogue, sex orgies, and feasting. Components added for the most part by theologies. Pact, 19% pact. Devil's mark, worship of, sacrifice to, or homage to the devil. The obscene kiss, and the Sabbath. The Sabbath appears in medieval witchcraft only at the end of 15th century. The coven and the black mass simply did not exist and are in no way part of medieval witchcraft. I think those words were stated by Mr. Jeffrey Russell, who's a very phenomenal author on these subjects. And I'd also have to state that I completely disagree. That I believe the coven, which the covet, is what they use in the word of Catholicism, uh, related to where the nuns are, uh, the nuns gather would be the coven. They also call this the coven. When witches gather together, it's called one large coven. So all this, and then the mass at the at the Catholic Church, and then they call this the black mass. You, you're playing too many fucking games, and I think this shit is fucking stupid. To be honest, okay? The black mass is basically a religion, a uh, 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 sexual. Re religious oriented format more directly in the blaspheme or in the uh, uh, or what you want to call in the mockery of the church uh, format but it's still a Sabbath basically the black mass is a Sabbath with more religious orientation to it that's related to church, to the Catholic church activities. Fused into it. That's it. It's all the same shit to me. Okay. Here goes pictures of a bunch of witches. This right here is a Druidic witch. Okay. These right here are other witches. Okay. This is where the conical hat. This picture is 1850 something. This picture is supposedly of a class of witches from a specific school somewhere in Europe. Now, I don't know if these are pictures or Halloween pictures or if these are real pictures. I don't know. I don't care. But the fact is, is that they're keeping this bullshit alive. They got the brooms right here. Each one of these women got brooms. They're all wearing the black. They all got on the hats. So they got some shit going. Whether the shit is real or not, who knows? Okay? But I know they forced it down everybody's throat on the planet. Okay. Three elements are necessary for witchcraft. The evil intention witch, the help of the devil, and the permission of God. Who, though he hates evil, allows it to occur. Since without freedom, with its potential for evil men, would have no potential for good. 
Witchcraft is the most evil of all crimes, and worthy of the most severe punishment, for it is immediate and direct reason against God itself. The malleus, the, so hold on, before we continue, you see there right there, permission of God. So, this whole witchcraft thing is allowance by God, because God uses the devil to punish man. And that's the structure that this thing operates by. The malleus defined witchcraft as the most abominable of all heresies. Its four essential characteristics being the renunciation of the Christian faith, the sacrifice of unbaptized infants to Satan, the devotion of body and soul to evil, and sexual relations with the incubi. Witches have become servants of the devil by making a pact with him and engaging in ritual copulation with Satan. They render homage to the devil, they use incantations, effect apparent changes in their shapes by means of diabolical illusion, practice various forms of maleficium, maleficium <coughs> are transvected uh, through the air from place to place by the power of demons and use the Christian sacraments and their vile rites. They cook and eat children, either their own or those of others, and they use the children's flesh and bones to obtain a sovereign ointment, which they then employ in their magical operations. Now, America has 11,000 some people missing a year. So define that. For we have seen the witchcraft as it existed in Europe from the 11th century was mainly the spawn of Gnostic heresy by its very nature embraced and absorbed much of heathendom. In some sense, witchcraft was a, de was a descendant of the old pre-Christian magic, but it soon <coughs> assumed a slightly different form, or rather at the advent of Christianity. It was exposed and shown in its real foul essence as the worship of the evil principle, the enemy of mankind, see, the enemy of mankind, okay? Sorcery, pagan religion, and folklore were the first three elements in the formation of European witchcraft. Christian heresy was the fourth. When the witch craze began at the end of the Middle Ages, it is most important beliefs were the riot by night, the pact with the devil, the formal repudiation of uh, Christianity, the secret nocturnal meeting, the desecration of the Eucharist and the cru crucifix, the orgy, the sacrificial infanticide, and cannibalism. Every one of these elements was either introduced into the tradition of witchcraft by hearsay or at least heavily modified by it. The mythological origins of witchcraft are a mixture of elements Teutonic, Celtic, and especially Greco Roman. The wild hunt associated with early witchcraft originated in a pagan Teutonic myth in which the souls of dead warriors rolled through the night in a destructive, raging procession. This myth carries with it the the thesis of the release of violence and brings together hunting, war, and menstruation. Hence, by the Middle Ages, the wild hunt was led by Artemis Hecate, the goddess of both fertility and of killing. Divination and necromancy. This is a list of the different types of necromancies here. So we're going to uh, read some of these. Uh, Electri uh, electriomancy is the reading is by cocks or poultry. The antinopomancy by the element by the entrails of women and children. This is reading the future, finding answers to things by looking at the organs or using uh, you know or using a certain type of system. You know. So capnomancy, the smoke was the system. Uh, Botanomancy, which is botany, which is the herbs. Okay. Uh, Caromancy, by melting of wax, which would be candles. Uh, Sebalonomancy is by broiling of an ass's head. You boil the donkey's head and you'll be able to tell the future. Okay. Chiromancy is by the hands. So when they say palmistry, reading of the hands. It's chiromancy. Okay? Um, let me see here. What's the name? Demonomancy is by the suggestion of evil demons or devils. Gastromancy is by the sounds or of signs upon the belly. Okay? Um, hydromancy is done by water. Um, let me see. 
Um, Philomancy is done by the navel. Oniromancy is done by dreams. Okay. Uh, uh, Spatalomancy is done by the skins, the bones, or shit logs. Okay. So yeah, there's a bunch of them. Now here's a picture of a bunch of magic mirrors. Magic mirrors, as you can see here, this one right here is most likely made of copper on the outside. Uh, this one right here is most likely made of obsidian. Same with this one right here and this one. Um, I've heard of uh, magic mirrors being made of several different types of materials. Copper being one, bronze being one, uh, iron, steel being used as a magic mirror is not the mirrors that you use in the bathroom are not the materials in which the mirror itself has to be compiled by certain has to be made in a specific way for you to be uh, for you to uh, talk to the other side okay the art of catatromancy or divination by means of a mirror has been practiced by necromancers and clairvoyants of all ages the Romans called such persons speculary so the speculators Okay. Perhaps even nowadays, every speculator is more or less a visionary. Varro, the contemporary of Cicero, says that the art originated in Persia. Pythagoras, 550 BC, consulted a highly polished steel mirror at the full of the moon in a book of all forbidden arts, written in 1455 by the Duke of Bavaria's physician. A similar use of a beautiful, bright, polished sword is mentioned. In his account of scrying with a steel mirror, Johannes Hartleib says, I have seen masters who maintain they can prepare mirrors such that any man or woman can see in them what they will. He also says that other reflecting surfaces can be used. There are even priests who will use the very patent that serves at mass to hold the host. They believe falsely, adds Hartley, that only angels and not demons can appear on such a consecrated object. One might suppose that a mirror would make an ideal tool for divination that requires concentration on a reflective surface because mirrors are designed specifically for reflection. A modern mirror, however, might be distinctly inappropriate for this purpose, precisely because it reflects too well and too realistically, giving too little scope to imagine a new play and the power of suggestion. Perhaps the mirrors used in divinatory experiments were less polished, but at least in some cases the magician is instructed to use a polished mirror. This is the crystal ball. The crystal ball, John Dee's crystal ball, specifically right here in the British Museum. The crystal ball was used for divination as well. They were used to tell the future, tell the future lover, make demons appear in the crystal balls to give powers or to give specific rituals, so on and so forth. The first adopters of crystal gazing would stare deeply into the stone falling into a meditative trance that would allow the subconscious to open and reveal secrets of past, present, or future. Although popular opinion would have us believe, psychics are only good for knowing what's going to happen. True crystal balls can see in any chronological direction depending on the seer's ability. This act of gazing into a reflective or translucent surface to glean prophetic insight came to be known as scrying. And while it's a gross sounding word to say out loud, the practice can be used on literally anything including blood, water, mirrors, and uh, even oily fingernails, though crystal balls are the most common mechanism for this type of divination. Many cultures utilize some, of, some form of ancient crystal healing or divination, but the most obvious association with the crystal ball comes from the Middle Ages, which lasted from around the time the Druids disappeared until the Renaissance in the 15th century. Though its, past, though its path is murky, the crystal ball was thought to be used throughout the medieval period by Anglo-Saxons as both a means of magic and a flashy fashion accessory, a type of middle age bling, so to speak. Ferguson even suggests that the mythical magician Merlin chose to tote around a barrel ball for those times King Arthur needed an emergency reading. Okay, 
So, now right here we have women creating the wax men and there's a wax ritual right here, okay? Now, this ritual right here was uh, placing a skull on a Bible and muttering secret spells. A jealous wife hopes to separate her husband from a, uh, from a from his mistress woman, okay? The dolls represent the adulterous pair, okay? And that's why she has nails in her to afflict disease, and he does not have nails in him. As we see here, the white woman is creating the wax doll. Now, an American stereotypical rumor or a stereotypical uh, position, status, they say the wax doll comes from the voodoo, comes from the black Africa, okay? That's not necessarily true as we see here, okay? This activity is recorded all throughout Europe in every single country. Now, this proceeding, however, no invention of his, but an imitation of a usual mode of enchantment by means of wax figures, periconcolis. The witches made a wax image of the person who was to be bewitched, and in order to torment him, they stuck it full of pins or melted it before the fire. The books on magic of the Middle Ages, uh, of the Middle Ages are full of such things, though the reader who may wish to obtain information on the subject need not go so far back. Early, uh, only 80 years since, the learned and celebrated Storch of the School of Stahl published a treatise on witchcraft worthy of, uh, of the 14th century. Okay. In 1331 France, Count Robert of Artois, uh, the and female associate charged with attempt on Philip VI and Prince John and with other sorcery, killing uh, through use of wax images. The woman burned, that was a case right there, the woman being caught with the wax images. There's many other cases uh, noted in the book. Now, the necropets, Narbok. This comes out of Iceland, okay? Icelandic witchcraft, to show you how far it stretches. Scottish witchcraft, German witchcraft, French witchcraft, and Italian witchcraft, it's all different. They all have base principles which are similar, but the details do differentiate pertaining to a specific culture to uh, protect individuality and also to protect mass unity. Okay, by the power of suggestion, okay, is what we have here. Now, necropants. In Icelandic witchcraft, Nabrok, okay, uh, calculated as necroprants, uh, literally death underpants, are a, a pair of pants made from the skin of a dead man, which are capable of producing an endless supply of money. The ritual was practiced in the 17th century. The ritual for making necropants is described as follows. If you want to make your own necropants, literally in the brock is how it's, it's pronounced, it's not brock. You have to get permission from a living man to use his skin after his death. After he has been buried, you must dig up his body and flay the skin of the corpse in one piece from the waist down. As soon as you step into the pants, they will stick to your own skin. A coin must be stolen from a poor widow and placed in the scrotum along with the magical sign, Nabrok Kostarfer which is right here, this sign, okay? Uh, written on a piece of paper. Consequently, the coin will draw money into the scrotum, so it will never be empty. As long as the original coin is not removed, to ensure salvation, the owner has to convince someone else to overtake the pants and step it to each leg. As soon as he gets out of it, the necropants will thus keep the money gathering nature uh, for generations. Okay, and as you can see, there are coins down here at the bottom. This picture is in the book. All right. So, the first burning for hearsay in the Middle Ages is hinted in the case of Vilgard of Ravenna, uh, but the first fully attested incident was at Orleans in 1022, followed by Montfort in 1028. Now. Uh, Orleans, New Orleans is known as a very uh, dark, uh, occultic location. We have to understand that Orleans, the word alone, comes from France, 
Same with the word voodoo, which comes from the word Baudoy, which may be mentioned here in a second. Okay. Okay. Now, it is no coincidence that the witch hysteria was at its height precisely in the period when torture was most widely used. Torture did not create witchcraft, for witchcraft already existed, but it was responsible for fanning the flames of popular hysteria into the Holocaust of the 16th and the 17th centuries. A more serious case was that of Alberic of Brittany in 1076 through 1096, a priest who smeared the crucifix with excrement and poured animal blood over the altar. Then caught in and vials, then caught it in vials and sold them as relics to the credulous. Alberic doubtless uh, had little to do with witchcraft proper, but that such things could occur indicates that superstitious crudeness and blasphemy that existed from which witchcraft could draw strength. The minor frivolous charge made by Adhemar uh, that the devil daily gave the heretics money found new few later echoes and may be dismissed except as an illustration of what materially immediate uh, solidity Satan might exhibit. Of the wish charges at Orleans, the four most significant are the sexual orgies, the sacrifice of human beings, specifically children, the burning of the children, and cannibalism. So, as Orleans is known as the voodoo and the Baudoy, all of that comes from France as the New Orleans Saints is the football team and the football team uses the Florida de Lee symbol which is also the French symbol but which is the warrior symbol for Europeans across the board as the Florida de Lee is a double symbol of a sword and a flower so it's just like today's Guns and Roses basically the romanticism of death Okay, the love of war. Witches. Other acquaintances may say that a witch is a person having psychic powers. It is true that most witches claim psychic powers, but possession of such powers does not make one a witch. There is much more to witchcraft than that. Others may think that witches practice voodoo, which is a misunderstanding of both witchcraft and voodoo. Voodoo is a religion combining Christianity and African paganism. Its rites are designed to protect against witchcraft and other evils. This is why voodoo uses Catholic saints and Christian saints, and we do not know why. Here it is. Because voodoo was given to the African pagan slaves as uh, a protection against European witches and the wars that they were going through as they considered the Africans to be wholeheartedly on the pagan side. So in converging of them and supposedly bringing them into Christian Christianity, they also had to give them a defense mechanism against who they're going to war with and that is the devil and the witches. And the creation of this combination of the European the Christian theology with African paganism developed voodoo. Rightfully so, because this is the same process in which all uh, pagan tribes of Europe went through in uh, merging with the Christianity structure. They refused to leave their pagan rights. So Christianity took the responsibility of embedding some of their pagan rites and allowing that practice as long as the Christian saints were being worshipped and fused and the Christian theology was amalgamated with the folklore of the pagan. Okay? Let's be clear on that. Now, more accurate and helpful answers are a witch is a sorcerer, there is an anthropological approach. A witch is a Satanist, this is the historical approach. A witch worships the ancient gods and practices magic. This is the approach favored by modern witches. Each approach can be justified, and that is true. But what really is a witch? One answer relies on the roots uh, and development of words, which derives uh, from the Old English Wicca, pronounced witcha 
and meanling male witch and wicke female witch pronounced witche and from the verb wicked uh, meaning to cast a spell contrary to common belief among modern witches it is not Celtic in uh, derivation and it has nothing to do with the old English witted to know or any other word relating to wisdom but explanation that witchcraft means craft of the wise is false okay wise man uh, is supposedly coming from the word male witch it's supposed to mean male, male, male witch as well so there's a lot of combination here the, you see how they tried to defend all of that but due to metaphysics, all of these words are in combination with the word witch. There goes pictures of more witches. Okay, this is a picture out of Anton Levy's church in practice of the Black Mass. This is 1800 pictures. Any picture in a circle with holding hands and dancing, ring around the rosy, pocket for the posy. And that is the Sabbath dance, the dance done at the Sabbath. And worshiping of the devil. Witches in the woods, big pot, conical hats, so on and so forth. The pyramid, which is held to hold the pot, is also specific. Understand that everything is detailed. Even in Europe itself, sorcery and witchcraft were continually confounded. A witch or a sorcerer might bear one of the following names. Strix Stria Striga, or Strigamaga. Uh, originally a screech owl, then a screech owl, then a night spirit and vampire, finally a witch, sorterius or sortilegious, a diviner, who uh, one who reads the lot, sortes, masca, uh, occasionally talamasca, associated with the use of animal masks and festivals, the mia or mama, a vampire, maleficent, uh, um, maleficus, uh, one who does evil, magic, maleficium. Uh, Scobax from Greek, Scots, a screech owl, a Latin, Scoba, a broom, Gazarius from Catharis, or Catharist, uh, a heretic, uh, Waldenses from Waldenses, a Waldensian heretic, okay, Herbarius, a herb gatherer, Pythonissa, a prophetess, Python, Python, the snake. Prophet, the, pie, the snake is the prophet. Facture, uh, which seems to derive from the Latin factus and to mean a maker of spells. Divinatory, diviner, mathematicus, diviner. Necromanticus, diviner by corpses, corrupted by ne necromanticus. Beneficus, uh, preparer of potions, usually poisons. Potion, poison. Tempestarius, storm maker. 17, incantatory. Enchanter, one who makes incantations. Anglo-Saxon, Wicca. A witch a Wicca, one who divides or casts spells. The masculine form of Wicca is more common than the feminine witch a German hex, deriving Old High German, Hagazusa, a, non, a night spirit, cannibal, or sorceress. Okay, now, hex, German hex. A hexagon is 720 degrees, which is also the honeycomb. Understand? Hex. Okay? And Henry A. Kelly goes so far as to say that in the context of Christian demonology, witchcraft means any human activity attributed to the help of evil spirits. From the theological uh, point of view, there is no difference between witchcraft and sorcery and magic. Witchcraft, stration, they cut you off of the dick and throw it in the tree. Let's see what they're talking about. There are those who writers who speak of men impotent and bewitched, and therefore by this impediment brought about by witchcraft, they are unable to copulate. And so the contract of marriage is rendered void and matrimony in their cases has become impossible. For they say, and St. Thomas agrees with them, that if witchcraft takes effect in the event of marriage, before there have been carnal copulation, then if it is lasting, it annuls and destroys the contract of marriage, and is it quite plain that such a, con a condition cannot in any way be said to be illusory and the effect of imagination. Okay? 
So they thought that men would think that their dicks wouldn't work, and it wouldn't work, basically, because of what the man was thinking. Okay? It was an illusory effect. Or a glamour effect that the witch cast it upon the man so the man would so the man would think that his dick wouldn't work. Okay? And a woman can do that in many different ways just by belittling you in in talk and the way she talks, okay? So this is the witch castration. And this is talking about um, this is definitely talking about erectile dysfunction, okay? But what is a fact beyond dispute is that such impotency can be brought about through the power of the devil by means of a contract made with him, or even by the devil himself without the assistance of any witch. Although this might rarely happen in the church, since marriage is a most excellent sacrament. The marriage is a holy sacrament. This will be discussed in volume three. Okay? So for you to be denied marriage is to be denied of the holy sacrament. And for you to be denied of the joy of marriage, which is the sexual union of you and your partner, which is the expression of love, then uh, you can render the contract null and void. Now, if this was applicable today, which on the books it probably is, written on many state, state contracts, that if the man renders impotent and cannot bring forth a child or pleasure, then she can uh, go, you know, she can renege on the contract. Here we go. A similar experience is narrated by a certain venerable father from the Dominican House of Spires. Well known in the order of the honesty of his life and for his learning, one day he says, while I was hearing confessions, a young man came to me and in the course of his confession, Woolley said that he had lost his member, being astonished at this and not being willing to give it easy credence, since in the opinion of the wise, it is a mark of lightheartedness to believe too easily. I obtained proof of it when I saw nothing on the young man's removing his clothes and showing the place. Then using the wisest counsel I could, I asked whether he suspected anyone of having so bewitched him, and the young man said that he did suspect someone, but that she was absent and living in worms. Then I said, I advise you go to her as soon as possible and try your utmost to soften her with gentle words and promises, and he did so. For he came back after a few days and thanked me, saying that he was whole and had recovered everything, and I believed his words, but again proved them by the evidence of my eyes. Okay. So, this statement is saying that it literally did happen and the phallus was removed. And the phallus was also brought back. So, how did this occur? By some form of glamour that the woman casted upon the man. And yet this preacher, yet I do have another case, where the other preacher uh, told him to beat the woman. And when he would tell her to beat the woman and get his dick back. And he did exactly that and got his dick back. But this, is, this story is to use soft words and be kind to the witch, and hopefully she will give it back to you. And that's what she did. Now, that, now see, what's also being shown here is the pressure of your situation and what extent you may have to act and plead and go to in order to gain uh, what it is that you desire. You see, you gain what you desire by the removal of pride. You cannot be prideful in order to beg for what you need, for what you gain. So for those, those people who do not have, and that's why, you know, the, uh, the unity doesn't last far amongst a lot of people in relationships. It's because they're too prideful to submit to what is the correction and they don't know how to act in order to get along. Okay, so anyways. <clears throat> and what? Then it's to be thought of those witches who in this way sometimes collect male organs in great numbers, as many as 20 or 30 members together, and put them in a bird's nest, or shut them up in a box, where they move themselves like living members, and eat oats and corn, and has been seen by many and is a matter of common report. It is to be said that it is all done by devil's work and delusion, for the senses of those who see them are deluded in the way we have said. For a certain man tells that when he had lost his member, he approached a known witch to ask her to restore it to him. Uh, she told the afflicted man to climb a certain tree and that he might take which he liked out of the nest in which, he, in which there were several members. And when he tried to take a big one, the witch said, you must not take the big one. 
uh, adding because it belonged to a parish priest. <laughs> So, during the medieval times, there was a lot of literature that you've seen in, in volume one where the priest uh, was known for, for boning all the women, okay? And also, there was a lot of jokes about them having the bigger slabs. I am a priest. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so, there it is with that. Now, the dicks being in a box and eating oats and cords, I don't know about all that, but hey, Maybe it was going down. Who knows the power of the cut, right? So, here. Now, the familiar. Okay. The animal familiar was quite distinct from the familiar in human shape. In England, particularly, there is abundance of evidence concerning them. And even today, who pictures a witch with nutcracker jaws, steeple hat, red cloak, hobbling along on her crutch without her big black cat beside her? It is worth remarking that in other countries, the domestic animal familiar is rare. And Bishop France Hutchinson even says, I meet with little mention of imps in any country but ours, where the law makes the feeding, suckling, or rewarding of them to be felony. Curiously enough, this familiar is most frequently met with in Essex, Suffolk, and the eastern counties. Uh, we find that animals of all kinds were regarded as familiars. Dogs, cats, ferrets, weasels, toads, rats, mice, birds, hedgehogs, hares, even wasps, moths, bees, and flies. It is piteous uh, to think that in many cases some miserable creature who shunned and detested by her fellows has sought friendship in the love of a cat or a dog whom she has fondled and lovingly fed with the best tidbits she could give. On the strength of this affection alone was dragged to the gallows or the stake. But very frequently the witch did uh, actually keep some small animal which she nourished on a diet of milk and bread and her own blood in order that she might divine by its means. The details of this particular method of augury uh, are by no means clear. Probably the witch observed the gait of the animals, its action, the tones of its voice, easily interpreted to bear some fanciful meaning, and no doubt a dog or such a bird as a raven, a raven, a doll, could be taught tricks to impress the implicity of inquirers. Okay. Now, here goes the imps. There's many of them. My imps' names are. This is Matthew Hopkins, Witchfinder General. Okay? We maintain the witch. Holt is the name. Jamara. Sack and Sugar. News. There goes the news familiar. I told you. This was drawn in 1647. So the news. Today's news. Okay? Is, the, is a familiar witch, okay? Understand that. It is a pet witch. Vinegar Tom, Grizzle Greedy Gut, Peck in the Crown. There's also names like, you know, Dyke, uh, Over the Dyke with it. It was the name of, a, uh, of an imp. And all of these names, there's about maybe two, a hundred different little names of imps inside the volume two. You need to understand it because these words are used today in different contexts. But we definitely can see that the spiritual content of the word has been maintained. And these words are hundreds, hundreds of years old. 1647, that guarantees us at least 400 and, uh, yeah, that's at least about 350, no, that's 360, 370 exactly. Am I right? No, that's 470. Huh. 470. Exact to this day. 470 years ago. The word news is being used. Sack and sugar. Okay? So that's how old the words are confirmed. Now, they probably go back further than that. But as we can see, that they embody the demons here. Now, the classic account of familiars. However, occurs in Matthew Hopkins' discovery of witches, 1647, after keeping her awake for four nights, Hopkins saw the familiar spirits come to Elizabeth Clark. Hope, who came uh, after keeping her awake for four nights. Now, understand that. If, you're, if you are kept awake for four nights straight, you're going to start to hallucinate. That is fact, okay? Uh, the body goes through, goes through drought and all types of crazy shit. 
Okay? Now, Ho, who came in like a white kitten, kitten. Uh, Jamara, who came in like a fat spaniel without any legs at all. She said she kept him fat, for she clapped her hand on her belly and said he sucked good blood from her body. Vinegar Tom, who was like a long-legged greyhound, with a head like an ox, with a long tail and broad eyes, who when the discoverer spoke to and bade him go to the place provided for him and his angels immediately transformed himself into the shape of a child of four years old without a head and gave half a dozen turns about the house and vanished at the door. Sack and sugar, like a black rabbit, okay? Uh, news, like a polecat. All these vanished away in a little time. Hopkins swore on oath that he had personally seen these imps while he was watching Elizabeth Clark and herself. This evidence was accepted and Miss Clark was convicted. At these sessions, seven women were hanged on no other account but that of harboring familiar spirits. Now, here's uh, the women, once again, this is an early wood graving, wood cut. And you don't see the conical hats, but you do see the burning of the baby, and the fire, and the boiling of the baby. The most favored way, and they're seasoning the baby with some type of potion, the most favored way was, was uh, spit roasting the babies, broiling them, okay? Wire gives condiment of these unjoins in his day, Lamis 3.17, exactly following and indeed reproducing for his own praise. The first liniment then is composed of the fat of young children seethed in a brazen vessel until it becomes thick and slab, and then skunked. With this are mixed uh, eleocilium, hemlock, aconitum, asonite, frondes, poplar, poplar leaves, and fuligo soup. The second formula is Seum, Calbane, Acron, uh, Olgar, Sweet Flag, Pentaphyllum, uh, Sinking Fowl, Euspertillarius, Sanguius, Bat's Blood, Solanum, Somniferum, uh, Deadly Nightshade, and Oleum and Oil. Don't try to mess around with this shit. And the reason it being is because even if these are the ingredients, you don't know how these ingredients were being prepared. And you don't know what had, what may have been specifically done with each ingredient in order to make it. You're really talking about some real high level shit here. Um, but just to let you know, this is the world that you're dealing with. And you little fucking kids play games too much. So that's why this is being brought to the forefront. This is the new whip on the back to get that ass back to work. Because the devil's here, baby, and your children are being sucked up into the uh, abortion clinics. For example, Priorius, the papal champion against Luther in 1521, said that the ointment used for flying through the air was made chiefly from the thick stew of boiled children, preferably unbaptized. Guazzo in 1608 repeated this fantasy. Francis Bacon enlarged on this hint, and in Silva Silverum, satirically noted that the fat of children digged out of their graves could be mixed with fine mead and the juices of smallage, wolfbane, and sinke fowl foil. Uh, he added scientifically that the sporiferous medicines are likest to drug the witches into delusions of flight. This hallucination was induced not by incantations but by ointments and anointing themselves all over. The fat of roasted babies, the fat of roasted dead babies also made a good Pugwendo Pagini. Okay, according to Berlandes in his Tractus, in his Tractatus de Sortil Sortilegius, Sortilegius is what I meant to say, okay, in 1536, and diseases so produced were incurable and could cause death. Uh, witches were assumed to rifle graves for bodies, especially those of children, and executed criminals which would be hanging in the air in the gibbet and the pillory as we read in volume one. There was multiple cases of body parts missing from the criminals to use as ingredients in magic potions, powders, and killing ointments. Okay, 
Now, as you can see here, a lot of babies are being sacrificed to the devil, and the devil is eating the baby. Closely associated in the heretical uh, tradition with the sex orgies was murder and cannibalism. The victims are usually children. Three reasons are alleged for the murder of children. First, they are killed so that they may be sacrificed to the devil. The auroras of Gazerium, uh, Gazerior, the Gazerium. Okay, let me do that again. The Aurorius Gazerorium specifies that the initiate to the sect must promise to go out and kill as many children under the age of three as he can, usually by smothering them in their cradles. The witches also killed and ate their own children, first affording them Christian burial in order to circumvent the suspicions of their neighbors. After the funeral, the witch repairs to the graveyard, exhumes the child, cuts off its head, hands and feet, and wraps up the rest of the meat to be brought to the meeting and they're devoured. This is the second reason for killing the children, so that they might serve as a loathsome, as a loathsome repast. Sometimes this cannibalism is explained simply in terms of the old tradition of blood sucking strigae. But more often the child is more completely consumed, usually after having been roasted. Strigae is the uh, family group name for owls. The streaking of the owl, it is noted in ancient Rome, used to fly by the window and collect the soul, usually in time to play. This screech that was ever that was usually heard either days before or minutes before souls were collected was also done by the banshee, which is noted as a woman, which moved that same energy of the owl into the woman into the witch. Now, this is a political picture we're looking at of the Sans Clout family uh, going to war in France, I believe it is. And uh, they, this is a, the Sans Clouts were uh, basically impoverished people in poverty that worked hard and they were fighting for equal rights with the hierarchy. Okay? And the city uh, drew this cartoon. The nobles and the royals who were of a higher class drew this cartoon to bastardize their position in time. What is unique about this picture is not only the savagery exhibited for uh, defamatory purposes, okay? This is basically slander political slander, what you would call mudslinging, okay? Now, well, what's unique about it is this right here. This is a detailed drawing on how the blood was extracted out of infants. If we see the twisting of the infant upside down, the basking to help the blood run, and they twist it on the rope with the legs tied and then the big nails going through the, the wrist and through the sides of the body to let the blood run. As we see much cannibalism and other things are going on here in the picture. The eating of the eyeball, the body parts appear, the drawing of the, of the execution on the wall. All of this has political definitions of what's going on. But, the reason I'm using this picture, inclusive with the groom being colored right here, okay, uh, which this is the witch and the groom, the, and then the children eating the entrails, these are human entrails that the children are eating, uh, but this is the specific. For somebody of a royal class to draw, be this detailed on how the blood was drawn out of infants, obviously, and this, for, and for also for this to be a political picture, whether it being slander or not, is irrelevant due to the fact that there is a collective social understanding of this type of activity, which brings it to a closer fact of being real, especially this. Okay. Now, in 1404, Paris the report by pre uh, Previt, the bodies hanged on gibbets and bodies of stillborn babies were being stolen. 
Persons responsible were suspect of witchcraft, not clear whether judicial proceedings ensued. In 1455, Idolo, unspecified number of witches accused of by an inquisitor uh, who requested aid of secular authority, had allegedly rejected sacraments, immolated children, adored the devil. In 1459, Ad Andermatt, uh, Katrina Simon, beheaded by municipal uh, court for diabolism, sorcery using avalanches inflicting illness, inflicting death on animals and infants, and transformation of self into animal. Uh, in 1461, the diocese of Lausanne, a woman uh, burned by an ecclesiastical court for diabolism and sorcery killing children. In 1467, Rome, Fraticelli, uh, tried for holding nocturnal orgies and making sacramental powder from ashes of children. And sometimes this ash, these powders and the ashes of children were baked inside the bread, and the bread were dipped inside the blood of the babies and eaten as well. In 1467, BL, man tried by secular court for diabolism and sorcery, whether magic infliction of death, stillbirth, and illness upon men, infliction of harm on animals. Okay. The osculum in fame, the licking of the ass. Okay? This is what they this is what's been going on. Now in hip hop, everybody's been eating the booty. I think right now they got a new song out with uh your boy Chris Brown on it, and the girl is talking about he gotta eat the booty like groceries. Well, they're worshiping the devil. That's direct evidence. Because the licking of the ass is the worshiping of the devil. Okay, it's well documented here. Okay? And this nigga gonna think you about that line thing? You ready, nigga? You know what this nigga said? I ain't come up here for all this. I'm going to pray, so hopefully I don't have to eat the booty. They eat the animal booty. The female might be eat the booty, the devil's booty, okay? This is the osculum in fame. It's 1608. So it is 1608 here in the picture. It is now about to be 2018. So that is 410 years strong of eating the ass. And that's how they've been getting down. Okay, now they try to... Uh, now they try to put it down on us. They say that we doing this shit. Where the eating booty coming from, I don't know. But it is here. The Oscar in the uh, fame may signify a kind of dark communion of eating of the God. A total taking into oneself of the devil, the osculum connected as it is to formal renunciation of Christianity, may also have been an allusion to the Judas kiss. The kiss is the link between the sexual uh, and witchcraft and the cannibalistic devouring of children. It is also noted that the anal is considered to be the devil's mouth. Okay, the other mouth is what the is what the anal is considered to be. Okay, so. Um, what that is, uh, the cat hole lick, the cat lick, it was licking the cat's ass too. That was more of a catharsis that was supposedly doing that. So here we go. Oscar Min Fame is the name of a witch's supposed ritual greeting upon meeting with the devil. The name means the shame of kiss or the kiss of shame. Since it involved kissing the devil's anus, his other mouth, according to folklore, it was the kiss that allowed the devil to seduce women during the years of the witch hunts, many believed that witches worshipped the devil and paid him homage by kissing his posterior. The Oscar infame is mentioned in nearly every single record account of witches' Sabbath and in confessions, most of which were extracted under torture. It was called the kiss of shame because it was generally regarded as an act of degradation. Okay? Now, it's considered an act of degradation. Uh... That's all I can say about it. I can tell you girls like to do that shit. You know, uh, you can see the shits all over the porn, all that crazy ass shit. Nigga would have never thought no crazy ass shit like that. You see that shit on the fucking porn. 
Now, this is uh, France Potiers. This is Merlin. The creation of Merlin is right here. They say a devil had sex with a woman and created Merlin. Then they said the conception of Alexander the Great was done with a dragon and a woman. And a nigga looking through the door, some cuckoldry going down. So, as we can see, there's many pictures I can show you of somebody making love in the room and there's some, somebody creeping through the window, the, uh, the peeping tom, okay? Witches have sexual intercourse with the devil or his assistants. The demon is visible to the witch, but not to anyone else. But with regard to any bystanders, the witches themselves have often been seen lying on their backs in the fields of the woods, naked up to the very navel, navel and it has been apparent from the disposition of their limbs and members, which pertain to the venereal act and orgasm, as also from the agitation of their legs and thighs, that all invisibly but to bystanders they have been copu uh, copulating with incubus devils. Demons in female form, the succubi, can also seduce human men. They do this in order to collect the men's semen, which they then use to impregnate human women. But the reason that devils turn themselves into incubi and succubi is not for the cause of pleasure, since a spirit is not flesh and blood. But chiefly it is with this intention that though the vice of luxury, they may work a twofold harm amongst, against men, that is in body and in soul, that so men may be more given to all vices, and there is no doubt that they know under which stars the semen is most vigorous, and that men so conceived will all, always be perverted by witchcraft. Okay? So, which men conceived by sperm being stolen by succubi will always be dedicated to witchcraft, and that's also re relative to the zodiac signs that that make the uh, the sperm very vigor at the time. Okay. Now, witches claim they are so overcome by demonic sexual pleasure that they swear there is no pleasure like it on earth. Because their members are of an uncommon size, they feel love the most secret parts of the witch, and they pretend to be in love with them. These women have greater pleasure than with men. On the other hand, witches often confess that sexual relations with demons were anything but pleasurable. Witches felt the most acute pain during intercourse. In fact, by late 16th century, the devil always had a member like a mule uh, as long and thick as an arm. Sometimes the demonic penis was covered with barbed scales as, or was composite in nature. Even being half flesh and half iron, the devil's penises might have two or three prongs for simultaneously penetrating more than one orifice. <laughs> the devil's even was often ice cold and painful, sometimes spoiled and rancid. Now, I didn't talk about cold orgasms, which is very true. That can occur. I have experienced it, but not coming from no male. I've experienced females who have had cold orgasm fluid. Okay, and uh, there's reasoning for that. The reasoning for that is because the mind can be wired to such a point where the emotions are not connected to the thought pattern of the brain, literally. And the emotions, when the emotions are at a very low percentage, that's what you call a person cold. And they literally are cold, and their, their uh, sexual secretion fluid will be cold in temperature. It will be colder than what the human body is at a warm temperature. Okay? This is true. I've experienced it. Now, half flesh and half iron. The half flesh and half iron is... Uh, a statement that I believe is related to erectile functioning. When the dick is very, when the when the penis is fully erect and pointing at the, is standing up to the navel, okay, it is definitely full with iron as your blood is based with iron, and it's talking about the pumping of the blood which is running through the phallus. So this half this half uh, flesh half iron statement could be. Uh, a guessing or it could be a high level science that they already understood based on medical and biology and they were just breaking it down in this witchcraft format with the understanding okay the human blood is based off of iron and erections are based off of the blood pumping through the body so they would definitely describe the devil's phallus to do that if the men around them by natural status, we're in a erectile dysfunction position. Okay. 
Now the basm, the basm is the name of the of the uh, broom that the witches fly on. Okay, in the Middle Ages, witches were prepared for flying ointment, <clears throat> also known as a green ointment, which is related to the green that you see on the witch in the Wizard of Oz. To aid them in their journey, the recipes for which uh, usually had a base of either belladonna, nightshade, or mandragora. Uh, both highly psychoactive drugs producing visions and encouraging astral projection, mixed with clove oil, which is known best for its anesthetic properties. Thus, the generally accepted theory about the origins of witches flying on brooms is based in a ritual involving a psychoactive drug trip. <clears throat> As the Ointment was rubbed all over the body using the broom, particularly on the forehead, wrist, hands, feet, under the arms, or between the legs. It gave a sensation of flying. The witches mounted broomsticks and would leap around the fields, smeared with the flying ointment to teach the crops how to high grow, uh, how, uh, teaching the crops how high to grow, and the ointment would give them imaginary trips and the feeling of having flown distances. Uh, I don't know. Possible, and maybe not, who knows. But uh, due to the fact that they were using high level arcane ingredients, such as bat's blood and uh, unsacrificed babies and fetuses, we don't know what the capabilities may be. This is a picture of a besom, and this is the chant stated in order to fly on the. Uh, in order to fly on the besom, and here goes a real one that's in a museum. Okay. The Sabbath orgy. The Salamanca doctors say they make a meal from food either furnished by themselves or by the devil. It is sometimes most delicious and delicate, and sometimes they pie baked from babies they have slain or disinterred corpses. A suitable grace is said before such a table. Guazzo thus describes their wine. Moreover, the wine, which is usually poured out for the revelers, is like black and clotted blood served in some foul and filthy vessel. Yet there seems to be no lack of cheer at these banquets, save that they furnish neither bread nor salt. Isabella further added that human flesh was served. Okay. They got a taste of their own medicine. The earliest uh, unambiguous example of the witch's cauldron is in Nida's uh, former carriers. This is the cauldron, is the pot that they're cooking in, which I showed you a size of the pot in volume one. We set our snares chiefly for unbaptized children and even for those who have been baptized, especially when they have not been protected by the sign of the cross of prayers and with our rituals and ceremonies. We kill them in their uh, cradles or even when they are sleeping by their parents' side in such a way that they afterward are thought to have been overlain or to have died some other natural death. Then we secretly steal them from their graves and cook them in a cauldron, canari, uh, until the whole flesh comes away from the bones and becomes a soup that may easily be drunk. We entered the houses of our enemies at night by doors and entranceways that were opened for us by demons. And while their fathers and mothers were sleeping, we picked up the tiny children and took them over by the fire. There, were, there we pierced them under their nails with the needle and then putting our lips to the wounds, we sucked out as much blood as our mouths could hold. And I always swallowed part of it, sent it right into my stomach, and part of it I put aside in a little bottle of a jar. From it I later made that enjoyment that we use for anointing our shameful parts when we want to be carried to the, uh, to the Sabbath. Okay? So, there goes the process on the anointing to the, um, going to the Sabbath. Okay, they anoint the shameful parts in their sticks with the special enjoyment that comes from boiled babies. Here is a painting of the Sabbath, or a drawing. Some of these Sabbaths are noted to have 10,000 to 20,000 individuals at attendance. This is a German wood cut from 1688. I mean 1668. Okay? A German wood cut of a massive witch's Sabbath, complete with the Oscar implement, performed on women, devils, and a goat. And old scratch having violent diarrhea into a cauldron, bottom center, right here. Violent diarrhea, right here. 
and the licking of the arm of the anus is here of the goat. And sometimes you do it over human too. The flying of the goat, flying with the goat, right here. And we have the babies cooking and there is food and the familiars are all here. These are all different demon familiars. And the demons are dancing in marching format all the way around. So they are standing in line for the big fiasco to think of the Cotez. Okay, now the witch trials. Okay, the various uh, witch trials consisted of a witch hunt including a series of witch trials which took place in the valleys, today part of Switzerland, between 1420 and 1447. It could be considered as the first series of witch trials in Europe, 50 years before the phenomenon became widespread. The victims were also accused of being werewolves. The persecution started in French-speaking Lower uh, Valais and spread to German-speaking Upper Valais and to nearby valleys in what are now the Swiss and French Alps. The number of the victims of the persecutions is unknown. There were at least 367 men and women killed. In 1428, the Dutch of Savoy uh, had been tormented by a civil war from 1415 to 1419. Between clans of the nobility where people had been severed uh, between the sides for and against the Rorin family, which other noble clans had rebelled against, and society was in a state of great tension. On, the, on August 7, 1428, delegates from seven districts in Belize demanded that the authorities initiate an investigation against the alleged unknown witches and sorcerers. Anyone denounced as a sorcerer by more than three people was to be arrested. If they confessed, they were to be burned at the stake as heretics. And if they did not confess, they would be tortured until they did so. Also, those pointed out by more than two of the judged sorcerers were to be arrested. Okay. So to show you the large, great numbers they would go through. 300 motherfuckers are going to kill. Okay. Those are some big numbers. Very serious numbers. Now, this is a typical day's torture. This is the verbatim report of the first day's torture of a woman accused of witchcraft. Okay? Now. The hangman bound her hands, cut her hair, and placed her on the ladder. He threw alcohol over her head and set her and set fire to it so as to burn her hair to the roots. He placed strips of sulfur under her arms and around her back and set fire to them. He tied her hands behind her back and pulled her up to the ceiling. He left her hanging there for three to four hours while the torturer went to breakfast. That's how they do. Still to this day, that is the attitude. Okay? I will let you sit in agony while I will enjoy my food and my grace. Okay? So, on his return, he threw alcohol over her back and set fire to it. He attached very heavy weights on her body and drew her up again to the ceiling. After that, he put her back on the ladder and placed a very rough plank full of sharp points against her body. Having thus arranged her, he jerked her up again to the ceiling. Then he squeezed her thumbs and, and big toes in the vise, and he trussed her arms with a stick. And in this position, kept her hanging about a quarter of an hour until she fainted away several times. Then he squeezed the calves and the legs and the vice, all, always alternating the torture with questioning. Then he whipped her with a raw hide whip to cause the blood to flow out over her shift. Uh, once again, he placed her thumbs and big toes in the vice and left her in this agony on the torture stool from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. while the hangman and the court officials went out to get a bite to eat. It was lunch. So you leave a woman hanging in the air, you know, while you go out to lunch with the cronies. Okay? Uh, and also, I want you to peep this questioning right here. They call this the question. Sometimes the torture process was called the question. You know? And today, you see the questioning as interrogation where the police are trying to find out information from the criminals. The sweat and the fear 
that gets placed on criminals during interrogation comes from this. It comes from all the torture, the screams and the souls that have been extracted during torture in old Europe. So now all I have to do is apply a little bit of stress. When Caucasians apply a little bit of stress to you during the questioning, you're gonna fold. And the reason why you're gonna fold is because there's millions of pure souls behind that. There's millions of them. Of souls that were taken, that were that were that were not guilty but were innocent. But went inside the ethereal law as guilty because they did confess. So that was fresh sacrifice to the element of the wordplay and the element of control that occurs inside the, the, the situation of interrogation. Okay, so in this afternoon a functionary uh, came who disapproved this pitiless procedure but then they whipped her again in a frightful manner. This concluded the first day of torture. The next day they started all over again but without pushing things quite as far as the day before. This was recorded in 18, no, this was recorded in 1629, but put inside the book, Hexen and Hexenmeister in 1860. So, that was it for the witches, and there is much, much more in the volume two than what you saw here today. Please believe there is a lot more uh, that is in the volume two. What you see here is the cover for volume three that will be coming out in September. We will be talking about the castrati, the castri the, the castrated boy choir, the holy blood and the holy organs of many different saints, Jesus' holy foreskin, we have pictures of it, we have the fish bishop, saints who levitate, the incorruptible saints, we have monsters, gargoyles, the Spanish Inquisition, we also talk about the Luciferians, which was a her heretical sect during the medieval times, so we're going to talk about who they really were. Okay, the catacomb bone churches and how they were designed and whose bones are actually in the catacomb churches. So, all of that will be talked about. I appreciate your time, appreciate your purchases. You go to thekickedoutofheaven.com to get the three volume series. Peace. What's a skinny jean wearing nigga with purple dreads? Got a divorce of bald bitch that give him dry hair. What about her best friend? Looks like her baby daddy on the gender bin. Trying to put the little homies on a homo trend? Fuck what they say. His boss, little Wayne, lovey daddy won't let him play. Tired of chicken dumplings steady coming from the AU niggas. Be from small towns and the neighboring states. So please let me present the facts on the case. Your honor, they're all cowards. You can see it on their face. If they make a wrong move, the Jew will put them in their place. So I want you young and little niggas. Grab your ankles. Why you on the chase for the Got no person, they hurting inside. 
They daddy wasn't there and they mama told him lies Which he sent, got the muscles but the bitches got his pride Rick Ross on decline, his outfit to disguise Snoop got locked up cause Whitey thought he was high Shook Knight got hit with a bell at million twenty-five These supposed to be our bad guys at the same time Every nigga in the country about to get shot up And ain't a billionaire nigga that done drop one buck What about Farrakhan and the Million Man March? Every time niggas gather they gotta bring grocery carts I'll let you miss from dance in the King's Court with no heart for the motherfucking hey. Niggas speak and think on a third grade level They complain about signing contracts with the devil Even Puffy got in trouble and had to be humble Too much gas in that Lambo, get your hair bubbled UCLA got money from slave days What about Dr. Dre, who almost lost a big deal? Cause a homie got on Instagram flashing champagne and bills Meek Mill apologizing to Chief Real. While West Coast of Texas give a fuck how you feel Jay-Z know the deal, be a father for real Hip-hop is dead, the bitch just lost the repeal Now tell me how many more niggas Get killed for the Thank you.